In this tutorial, I want to show you how to draw great looking mechanisms and schemes in ChemDraw. First of all, I go to the file menu and make sure that I have an ACS document. The default settings for ChemDraw are kind of wonky, so you'll want to go to the apply document settings from this ACS document. Now, if you're a grad student and your PI has certain settings that they want to specify for you, you may need to go into the document settings yourself and then go into this drawing setting. If they want a different length of the bond, you can adjust that here. You can make your line width thicker and your bold width thicker. You can change the size of the text captions. That'll be the default, so that's really great. I sometimes feel like that 10-point font is really small, so for some presentations, I like to size this up. Um, for, the, for some PowerPoint presentations, I sometimes like to make my bold width and line width exaggerated a little bit so my structures just appear a little bit more solid on my slides. Um, the atom labels are actually when you type onto the molecule, what your atom labels are going to look like. So you can set these to be bigger, or smaller, whatever you want. That being said, I'm just going to use the default ACS style settings for this tutorial. Now let's draw the Dieckmann cyclization. If you're not familiar with this mechanism, no worries. I'm going to take you through it and really this tutorial is just to learn about the settings that we have. Now if you know the name of the structure you're drawing, the easiest thing is to go into this convert name to structure. I have this key command memorized because when you make a career out of chemistry, you really want to be able to do this quickly all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the name of the molecule that I want. And here's my starting material. Since we're drawing a mechanism, we'll be using a lot of arrows, so I'm going to double click this and this brings it out. I am, let's see, using ChemDraw 16. If you had any versions previous, when you clicked on this little arrow that brought it out, you could actually just drag from here and drag this out into your workspace if you wanted to, but now it's a double click in ChemDraw 16. My final product is going to be a ring, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And the default puts this point up. If I click and hold, I could orient this in any way. So if I wanted my flat bond right here, I can do that as well, but I'm just gonna undo that. I'm gonna end up with a carbonyl here. The best way to draw is by clicking on the bond. If you click on a bond, it'll give you 120 degree angles between everything. So ChemDraw does that for you. Double clicking on this bond here is going to give me my double bond. And then I can either select this A or I can quickly double click and put my oxygen here. Again, if I just click right here, the bond will go in this direction. And then I can draw another bond. Now, say I didn't want this bond pointing down. Say I wanted it pointing up. I can just undo, so Control Z or Command Z, click again, and it puts my bond in the opposite direction, as long as I don't do any other things in between. So see how that just reoriented it? If I undid it again, it'll go down. If I undo it again, I can orient it up. Very convenient. Now I'm going to put my double bonded oxygen here, and then I need to add my O methyl. Now say I clicked and dragged. And I ended up putting my bond in this kind of weird geometry here. This doesn't look good, and we want to make really good-looking schemes. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, which selects my structure. And then I can go to Clean Up Structure. Now this kind of oriented this downward. Maybe I wanted it up. So here I'm going to go ahead and take this up, select it again, clean up the structure, and then it goes into a better geometry in the location where I've sort of nudged it to. Now I'm going to draw in my reagents. In the first step, I'm going to use NaOme, sodium methoxide, to do my deprotonation. And then after this reaction, we end up with an anion. So in a second step, we're going to need to add an acid. Now, see I have this, this 2 looks really bad here. It's supposed to be subscripted. Now, I could go in, select it, and, you know, subscript these things manually. But there's an easy way to do this and apply it to everything that you're doing. This little CH2 button here is going to super and subscript mostly appropriately. So once in a while with like a metal or something, I'll have to add in um, super and subscripting. But the formula button, it's very smart and it'll pretty much know what you're doing. 
Okay, now I want to draw a nice arrow under here that spans my reagents. We might want to center that, and actually there's a really great way to center this. Say I want to make these objects aligned in their centers. I can go to Object, Align, and I can do Left Right Centers. And you see that moved it over a little bit. Now maybe I think that the way the arrow is, this, this L is a little bit too close, so I might just go ahead and nudge this over with my arrow keys to where I think it looks good. Also, we may want to align this arrow with the middle of this molecule in this direction and have these two things aligned. So I'm going to just select and then I'm going to do shift select so I have that selected. And maybe I want to select my arrow with this and get everything aligned in the middle. Now I go back to my object menu, align top bottom centers. Okay, now everything is aligned top to bottom just right in the middle. I might nudge this down so it's not too close to my reagents here, and we're looking pretty good to start. Okay, now I'm going to quickly show you how to draw the Dieckmann cyclization mechanism, and I'm going to show you how to use this pen tool to make really cool looking arrows for your uh, mechanism arrows, and we'll use the regular arrow tools as well. I'll begin by copy pasting this compound down here. My first step is going to be a deprotonation, so I'm going to draw a hydrogen. Ooh, and that looks kind of weird. I, maybe I want that hydrogen coming down, but now my bond angles look a little bit strange because I wanted to show both of these hydrogens. So remember, we go to structure, clean up the structure, and now these are at great bond angles since I have four substituents on this carbon shown. Now I want to show sodium methoxide, so I'm just going to show methoxide because that's what's relevant for our mechanism. Now I can click on this, and I should actually show you one more thing. I always have my chemical warnings turned off, and one of my chemistry friends says that's like drawing without spell check. Um, so <laughs> you want that maybe on while you're learning to do mechanisms because this is showing me something is wrong. I have OME, and that is not, chemically, that's not a good structure. Now, when I take my negative charge and put that wherever I want to, I'm just going to kind of orient it down here somewhere near my oxygen. The red highlight, it goes away. It's telling me that I've done a good job, that now my structure looks correct. So leaving those chemical warnings on will help you not make mistakes early on. Okay, now I can take one of my arrows, and maybe the flattest one is going to look good here. So it's not quite pointing toward my hydrogen, and that's okay. What I'm going to do after I draw the arrow is kind of orient it in the direction that I want. Maybe use my arrow keys, so we'll do just kind of a combination of this nudging to get my arrow where I want to. Now I can go over here, and I want to show this bond becoming a negative charge on my carbon. Now it's not really pointing at my carbon, so I had chosen this um, arrow here. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more curved. So I can go ahead, ooh, and that points very nicely to my carbon. Unfortunately, it's traversing this carbon. Maybe you'd want to orient that a little bit differently. But I think this is okay for our purposes in this tutorial. Let me show you how to do a really fancy arrow. Sometimes I like to use the pen tool and I like to put three dots. So I'm going to put an anchor point here, an anchor point here, and then one here. If I right click on this line, I can put a full arrow at the end. And now this can be used to make a mechanism arrow. So this is kind of fancy. It gives you a nice curve. You can kind of orient it how you want. And then when you deselect it, you're going to have this kind of wavy looking arrow. Maybe I think that's a little bit too close to my hydrogen. So I'll just nudge it to where I think it looks good. And then adjust my methoxy group appropriately. Oh, we just want to maybe shift and deselect this piece. And now we have this kind of nice wavy looking arrow. And I always do three anchor points. I usually have better control over where the arrow goes when I do it that way. Um, if you get any more, you start to get sort of funny angles. So that's a nice way to make a good arrow. We'll show a nice equilibrium arrow. And then I'm going to copy paste my structure to show the anion that I formed from the deprotonation. 
So if I just hold my cursor over this, I can press delete on my keyboard or I can actually click on it and select it. But when you're deleting a lot of things, you can just hover over them and delete. But I want to undo that because I want to keep my molecule here. Okay, here's our anion. So I just drag on that carbon so this stays associated with the carbon. And then I can go ahead and maybe do something like this. Let's see if I can make that look good. So now we have a nice little curved arrow coming up like this. I don't know if that's any better than I can do with the arrow tool. So let's just go ahead and select this arrow tool. Point it toward my carbon. Maybe do our little adjustments to really make sure it's pointing where we want to make our bond. And then I can show this double bond coming up and becoming a lone pair on oxygen. All right, let me show you a trick that I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to copy paste my structure again. You might be like, wait a second, you, you want to form a ring. You got to draw this differently. But what I like to do is just take whenever I'm forming rings out of, especially out of long chains, if you just take the position where you were making your bond and attach it to the position where your bond is going, then of course I need to get rid of my double bond here and put on a negative charge. Then I can just go through and I'm going to use the key command for clean up structure. And this can get into a pretty nice orientation for you. The more you clean it, the more it'll go into other other directions. I don't really want to show stereochemistry here, so I'm just going to go over these bonds. My negative charge kind of ended up in a weird spot. So here I just have these bonds and that was kind of hard. So you see how it made that um, connection there. So I could just zoom in to click on bonds better and then zoom back out. And I like to kind of stay at 150%. Helps me see it pretty well. All right, now I'm going to show you a very useful trick, but what I'm going to do here is change my reagents because HCl is kind of boring, but I want to show you how we can expand labels in ChemDraw. So say you have a chemical abbreviation. You're like, oh, I'm so lazy. I want to show this mechanism well, but I don't want to draw out sulfuric acid. Well, what we can do is just take our chemical abbreviation, pop this right over here, now, with this selected, just using the selection tool, we'll go to structure, expand label, and there we have sulfuric acid. Perhaps we want to show this proton so we can show our arrows effectively. So we'll draw this bond out. Now we can grab one of our less curved arrows. We'll put that right here. Of course, we can always move this other partner Show this becoming a lone pair on oxygen. And now we've arrived at our final product. Pop a negative charge on there. My chemical warning is telling me to. And if I wanted to just put in a little plus or something like that. Now, maybe I was really anal about this and I want to make sure everything is very well aligned. We can select this, do our object align top, bottom, centers. We could do this over this part of the scheme. We could align right edges over here if we were really worried about it. But I think we have a pretty good looking mechanism drawn. So I hope you learned something. If you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm going to be working on a few more ChemDraw videos in the near future. So if you're interested in learning this program, hopefully I can help. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.